Okay, so next let's turn to page 35 in your manual and talk about SMART goals. And you may or may not have heard of SMART goals before. Typically speaking, SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, and Timed. However, from an NLP point of view, there's a number of other criteria that I think uh, goals should actually adhere to. Now, we're going to look at the SMART goals here, and then we're also going to look at goal setting and additional elements that really, really make goal setting and take your goal setting to a much deeper level than you may ever have done before. So let's just look on page 35 and talk about what SMART means from an NLP point of view. So first of all, the S. A goal needs to be specific, simple, and sensory based. Now, the unconscious mind likes to follow the path of least resistance. Very often people say, oh, I want to feel happier, or I want to make more money, or they have very flaky goals. Well, the question is, what does that really mean? What does more money really mean? What does happier really mean? Compared to what? So, I want to be very specific, because if I say I want to make more money, and I walk down the road, find a tenner, then the unconscious mind says, okay, well, that's more money, so job must be done. And that's probably not what the client meant. So we want to really, really knuckle down and we want to be very specific in the goal. So let's say this was a business-related goal. I would say it's the 1st of December, whatever the year is, and I have made one million pounds profit. Now take note, it's specific in the sense of I've got the date, I've got the year that it's in, I've got the amount, i.e. a million pounds, and I'm saying it's profit. Because you can make a million pounds turnover and only make 10,000 pounds profit. And again, that's probably not what the client meant. So... It's the 1st of December, 2000 and whatever the year it is. I have made one million pounds profit. And that's a very simple goal as well. You know, I'm literally just giving a time, a date, and what it is that I've done. Now, also sensory specific. So as we think of sensory specifics, I'm going to come back to that as we add a few extra elements to this goal. I'm going to come back to the sensory based. Next, we've got M. So measurable and meaningful to you. Now, if I say I've made one million pounds profit, how am I going to know that I made a million pounds profit? I need to be able to measure that in some way. And so I could say it's the 1st of December, 2000 and whatever the year is. I've made one million pounds profit. And I can see that on my profit and loss statement. Just an example. Or I can see in the letter that the accountant has sent me that, you know, I've made one million pounds profit. But there's got to be some way in how we measure this goal to see what the outcome is. Meaningful to you. Very often, and this, this has happened a number of times, somebody comes to the office and they say, you know what? I would like to stop smoking. And then I asked him, okay, so on a scale of 0 to 10, you know, how much do you want to be a non-smoker? And they said, well, I don't really, but my wife said I need to be a non-smoker. And the, the question then is, you know, how much energy are they going to put into becoming a non-smoker? Not very much. And so we can have goals that include other people. That's perfectly fine. But I think it's important for the goal to be primarily ours. It's got to be our goal, meaningful to us. Because if we do the goal for somebody else, we're not going to put in the same amount of effort. You remember the old song that says, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going? Well, yeah, the goal needs to be meaningful to the clients themselves. Next, we got as if now, achievable, and all areas of life. 
as if now I want to state that goal as if I already have it. So if you remember when we said it's specific, I said it is the 1st of December 2000 and whatever the year is. So that is as if now. It is, whatever the date is, I have made or I have one million pounds profit. So I'm acting as I already have it. You see, it's really important for us to be able to believe and imagine that we already have achieved that goal. And the unconscious mind is great because the unconscious mind will actually start moving you towards this goal. And the outside, you know, the, the universe and what's outside of us will actually start to manifest if you believe, of course, that you're worth it and that you have it. Now, it's important here to remember, I don't want to say it's the 1st of December and I want to have made one million pounds profit. Well, because you already want. Does that make sense? You already have the goal of I want to do that. And you don't yet have that million pounds. So I don't want to put a goal as an I want. I'm putting the goal as if I have it. And creating this internal representation of actually having it. Which I'm still going to get back to with the sensory based. And so next we've got achievable. And with achievable, we've got a, this is a bit of a balancing act. Because the goal's got to be achievable and so that we actually can reach it. And at the same time, I want to set a goal that is going to stretch me. Because, you know, a goal really should, it should be something that you're going to be putting in some effort to. And I think most people actually set goals that aren't big enough. They actually set goals mediocre goals and the problem is not that they set me mediocre goals the problem is they set mediocre goals and they actually achieve them well for what purpose i'd much rather set a goal that's going to stretch me that when i achieve it is going to be so much better at the same point in time we've got to be aware that we don't think achievable and it be affected by limiting beliefs. So it's very important to get rid of all limiting beliefs and all doubts about your ability to be able to achieve that goal. So to say I've made a million pounds profit, is it achievable? Well, that depends on the type of industry that you're in. Depends on the amount of people that you're serving. Probably one thing to do is to check outside of yourself. You know, look, look around and say, okay, has anybody else made a million pounds profit within my industry and if the answer is yes then well it's achievable you just haven't done it yet so we want to take that goal stretch yourself a bit make sure that you know it's a goal that's really worth achieving and get rid of all limiting beliefs and doubts that might actually hold you back all areas of your life will look when we talk about the wheel of life at different areas in our life but essentially you know if we just think of a few here spiritual career health relationship personal growth and development family we want to make sure that our goal doesn't negatively affect any other areas of our life and so to say I've made a million pounds profit, that can be a good thing. However, if it negatively affects my relationships or my family because I'm just in work and I actually never get to see them and, you know, to deal with the issues, the, the client turns to drugs because, you know, they're spending so much time away from home, then that is not a goal that's congruent with all areas of life. So at the very least, it must not have a negative impact on the other areas of your life. And where possible, obviously have a positive impact on the other areas. Now R is for realistic, responsible and ecological. So realistic, a little bit 
in line with achievable. However, I'd add some additional criteria here. If I'm in a business and I want to make this million pounds profit, but I'm only selling widgets at one pound per widget, a thousand widgets a month, I'm only going to make 12,000 pounds by the end of the year. So it's probably not realistic that I am going to make a million pounds profit. However, if I change or modify my widget so that I can sell it into other vertical markets and my potential client base now grows exponentially, then suddenly it can become realistic to achieve the goal. So realistic and achievable, slightly different. Again, I'd like to look at realistic. Is it possible? You know, has anybody else done it? Or how can I change what I'm doing or adapt what I'm doing to make sure that it does become realistic? Of course, then responsible and ecological. We'll talk about ecology a lot during the training. Ecology essentially means what will be the impact on the client, on their family, on society, and ultimately the overall system, the planet, and the overall system. So what will be the impact if the client gets this particular outcome? So just like it mustn't negatively impact on other areas of the client's life, of course, if the client says, I want to have a million pounds and I'm going to do that by robbing a bank, again, that's not ecological. You know, they're probably going to get caught. It's wrong that they're stealing anyway. Uh, they're going to be spending some time in prison. And so it's going to have a negative impact on the system. Then lastly, we've got T for timed and towards what we want. Timed is very my, my specific date and it ties in with the as if now. It is the 1st of December, whatever the year is. I have made one million pounds profit. And notice that that is towards what I want. Remember, it's extremely important to take our focus and focus on what we want. If I focus on not being poor, not being bankrupt, not battling, where's the focus? The focus remains on not being poor, not battling, not being bankrupt. As opposed to focusing on what I really want, which is wealth, which is my towards goal. One thing to remember is that the conscious mind is the goal setter and the unconscious mind is the goal getter. And if the conscious and the unconscious minds are at variance, then the unconscious mind is usually going to win out. And so if you don't believe that you can achieve or deserve your goal, then you need to get rid of all the limiting beliefs and all the doubts to really get you moving towards what it is that you want. And so if we come back now to the sensory specific goal, I'm going to give you a overall example of what the goal might be it is the 1st of December 2000 and add the year I have made 1 million pounds profit I can see that by looking at the profit and loss statement I am sitting in our holiday home with the sliding doors open Feeling the fresh breeze coming off the ocean, smelling that sea salt as it cools us down slightly from the hot temperature outside. I can hear the kids playing in the background with the dogs whilst granny is making lunch and granddad is running the boat motors because we're just about to go water skiing. Now, there's a lot of sensory specific information in there as well. And so we'll see later as we go and as we do more work with our goals that I want to really get very sensory specific about the goal so that I can totally believe and create in my mind this outcome that I want. And what's beautiful is that the unconscious mind can't tell the difference between a real memory and a very 
well imagined memory or picture and so I want to be very very sensory specific in this image that I'm imagining this internal representation and I'm going to present this and, and put it into my future timeline and what will happen is my unconscious mind will actually help me to head towards achieving that outcome in fact there's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system uh, we'll call it RAS for short and the reticular activating system does a number of things but one of the things that it does is it helps to bring into your conscious awareness things that are around you so have you ever been to a football game or to a shopping center and you see that one person that you know in the sea of a thousand faces that's a universal experience that most people have experienced that and that's your reticular activating system or you say you know what I want to buy this new car or maybe you've just bought a new car and then every other car that you see on the road is that type of car that's your reticular activating system it's bringing these things into your consciousness and so when you get very specific with your goal and you set this goal with the intent and you've got rid of your limiting beliefs and your doubts then your reticular activating system is going to work with your unconscious mind it's actually going to you're going to start seeing options and opportunities to move towards the outcome that you want to achieve so that's smart goals in a nutshell and we are going to look at goal setting from another number of other aspects as we look at NLP and go throughout the training